We have a lot to get to. We'll be joined by our friend John Bolton in just a few minutes, who's going to weigh in on the uh, shooting at the Navy Yard, Syria, Benghazi. Uh, we have uh, a follow-up on the Obama phone, and you'll hear from the Obama phone lady. That's right. Don't miss that in this hour as well. And um, also, um, uh, Rabbi Shmuley Boteyak will join us live in studio in a little while. Uh, but first, um, and, and an Obamacare update. It looks like the House is going to vote on defunding Obamacare. So all good things are happening. Big things are happening. But in New Jersey... We have a very important Senate race that uh, is well underway. As you know, Steve Lonigan is the Republican nominee. Cory Booker, the mayor of Newark, is the Democrat. And joining us now is our friend Steve Lonigan, the former mayor of Bogota, New Jersey. Hey, Steve, how are you? Hey, Steve. I'm just back from West Orange where we had a press conference in front of the law office of Cory Booker's former law partners. Well, maybe former. According to his tax returns, is he's still involved with this firm. Well, uh, yeah. Frank D. Pasquale. Yes. Well, I, I want to talk about that. And I want to get to that. Well, well, let's start with that then. And, and uh, you know, you, you challenged Booker to disclose uh, his uh, purported separation uh, from this law firm because uh, we, we've learned, uh, I guess, that uh, while he was getting a payout from that law firm, the city of Newark, where he was mayor or is mayor, awarded contracts to this law firm. Well, the question is, is it a payout or a payoff? Right now it looks like a payoff, and it's up to Cory Booker to prove otherwise. Prior to becoming mayor in 2007, Mr. Booker was a councilman in Newark, and he had ran for mayor four years early, and at the time he was for six years with this law firm. After being with the law firm for four years, they made him a partner for the last two years. Now, all the time knowing this guy was running for mayor. I mean, he was, he was focused. He had already run once. He was focused on winning. firm allegedly and at, while being mayor the last seven years has received 680,000 almost three quarters of a million dollars in what's called a payout you know we're not sure payout payoff from this law firm that simultaneously received millions in that in that contracts from state agencies now when he revealed his tax returns he checks off on the tax return that he had been materially involved with the law firm while he's mayor and while they're getting this contract and while he's getting these big fat checks. Now, this is the guy who got on the Jimmy Fowl show the other night and talked about how important it is to be transparent. But he will not divulge his contract when he became a partner for two years at 100000 a year and then his separation agreement.
right. that prohibits elected officials from being participants under the law, prohibits them from participating with a contract or a vendor to their city. All right, so you and want you want to see the proof. You want to see the documentation that's uh, uh, to, to show how this so-called separation took place, is in place, ever took place. You want to see that, right? Look, either this law firm are either very bad business people because <laughs> they give this guy a partnership with two years to go before he becomes mayor, and then they give him an sh- enormous amount of money, and they just happen to get big, fat, juicy contracts. I mean, come on, I wasn't born yesterday. That's true. Right? And, 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 <laughs> and <laughs> so this is the kind of thing that where he needs to come clean. Let's see the contract. Let's see in writing what they signed back in 2005 that would entitle somebody to be a partner for a short term and get an enormous amount of money in return. It just doesn't make sense. But this is the kind of thing that has been rampant in Newark with other mayors, and this guy needs to be transparent like he says he's going to be. All right, Steve. This is what I'm up against. He wants to bring this kind of... And that is where you uh, you uh, stood in front of a, uh, a a building, an abandoned home on Court Street in Newark, uh, which Cory Booker owned until March. Um, talk about and, and and you weren't treated very well by the people of Newark either. It, it, no, actually, there were a lot of people in Newark treated me very well. There were paid hacks of Cory Booker that were paid to come over and assault me. This house, I call it a crack house. Okay, it was disgusting, broken down, dilapidated, busted windows. This was a mayor's property. And this thing was had, they had drug addicts in it and vagrants while he was mayor. This is the example he set in a community that's, that really, if you look in the neighborhood, people are trying to maintain their properties, absolutely disgraceful. So uh, they paid a bunch of hacks from an entity named Newark Now to come over and yell at me during the press conference, which is just ridiculous. But, look, the press covered it. They saw it. But this is another example. This guy lives above the law. He passes a property maintenance ordinance that says, Oh, you have to register your vacant home. You have to end these vacant homes. And he's the worst of all. He's and, the biggest culprit. And he never, he's and fine. he's never registered this vacant home. Uh, as far as we can tell, not as a vacant home. He never maintained it. Never cleaned up. It was absolutely disgraceful. The neighbors, you can read the articles in the New York Post and other papers. You know, the neighbors saying how disgusting it that's, was. That's that's not even a slumlord. What would you call that? It's even worse. It's way worse than a slumlord. Yeah, it's ab- absolutely despicable. Here's the funny thing. The Booker people, because I called it a crack house. There are drug people living there. And this is the mayor who has drug addicts come by to his house, and he has a fictitious drug addict friend named uh, right. T-Bone. And, yeah. made up. <laughs> and they attacked me because I called it a crack house. And that's a code word, apparently, to, uh, to, to rev up the right wing. I said, look, you, you tell me what drug T-Bone wanted to be called. Is it a heroin <laughs> house, a methadone, a methamphetamine house? Uh, yeah, I, I don't care. Whatever, you, whatever the Brooklyn people drug they wanted to call it, it's fine with me. Right. Attack, that's how it, a, yeah. attack the messenger, Steve, right? Attack you for, for calling it what you call it, but ignore the fact that it's there. Uh, just attack you. Uh, it, it, it's a good trick of the media. I, I, I know you got uh, the, the, the Rand Paul endorsement. You got that, uh, um, on, that on our show. We, we heard that uh, yep. from him himself. And I, I know that uh, other national figures are stepping up as well. I have Governor Christie's fundraiser tomorrow night in New Jersey at the Fours Gate Country Club. Steve, it's going to be a big event. I'm excited about the governor's support. He's been terrific. And we have uh, Governor Rick Perry coming yes. in on October 1st, which is the day Obamacare kicks into high gear.
Yeah, very exciting. Steve, I, I wish you nothing but the best. We'll, uh, we'll keep talking Lonigan. to you and, and where people could go where to help you out. Lonigan, L-O-N-E-G-A-N, Lonigan.com. I need to raise money. We raise money. We're going to win, and, and we're going to win the first Republican U.S. Senate race in the nation in, in New Jersey.